Hello and welcome. You are back again with a fresh episode of Global Scan, a show that uh, gives you a 360-degree view of all the major global developments that have a bearing on international politics and you. From the build-up to the U.S. presidential elections to the spread of novel coronavirus, from U.K.'s post-Brexit roadmap to the first state visit of U.S. President Donald Trump to India, all that and more in the next 30 minutes. I'm Anman Bhattacharya. Let's get started with the top stories. U.S. President Donald Trump to reach India on the 24th of February. He will be accompanied by wife and first lady Melania Trump and a high-level delegation. Namaste Trump, Taj Mahal and trade are on the agenda of his action-packed first standalone visit to India. UK government says Britain will prioritize access for high-skilled workers from around the world in its post-Brexit points-based immigration system. Interior Minister Preeti Patel describes it as a radical shake-up that would eliminate routes for low-skilled labour to move to the UK. Nigeria's inflation rate hits 12.13% in January 2020, highest nearly in two years. Government holds all trade and goods via its land borders indefinitely to fight the smuggling of rice and other goods. Economists say that the choking off of supply has driven inflation. The 70th edition of Germany's biggest film festival, the Bernalale, kicks off. Ten days extravaganza to see a total of 342 films screening in nine different categories. India's External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar inaugurates the India Pavilion at the festival, also unveils the poster for the 51st edition of India International Film Festival to be celebrated in Goa this year, along with its booklet. Let's begin our journey across continents with news from Asia. U.S. President Donald Trump is all set to visit India. This will be his first visit to India. It will be a short but an action-packed visit for President Trump. He will address the Namaste Trump event jointly with Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the newly built Mudera's Cricket Stadium in Ahmedabad. This will be the first event in the newly built Mudera Stadium, which is the largest cricket stadium in the world. 25th of February is the main day of engagement. In the morning, President Trump and the First Lady would be accorded a ceremonial welcome at the forecourt of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. From there, President Trump and the First Lady would go to Rajkhat to pay respects at the Samadhi of Mahatma Gandhi. This would be followed by restricted and delegation-level talks between President Trump and Prime Minister Modi at Hyderabad House. The talks will be comprehensive and are likely to cover issues relating to our strategic partnership in the areas of defense, security, counterterrorism, as well as trade, energy, people-to-people -people exchanges and other bilateral matters. They would also exchange views on regional and global issues of shared interests. Prime Minister Modi would host a lunch for President Trump following the talks. The two leaders would also address the media. In the afternoon, President Trump is expected to attend certain private events at the U.S. Embassy, including a private roundtable with industry representatives. The final element of his visit will be meeting with President Ramnath Govind and banquet hosted by the latter at the Rashtrapati Bhavan on the evening of the 25th of February. President Trump would then depart later that evening. Well, Ahmedabad is all excited to welcome U.S. President Donald Trump. Our correspondent Meghna Dev spoke to few people there. Let's listen in. When Trump is, uh, President Trump is coming oh. directly to Ahmedabad, huh. what a moment it is. And obviously it's a moment of pride that he's directly coming to Ahmedabad. So what uh, perception do you get and how do you respond? It's a good thing. Any president coming to our country, that too, um, especially U.S. president coming, coming to Ahmedabad, that speaks volumes. Ahmedabad is doing well, Gujarat is doing well. India is doing well. Very, very happy that we are here in Ahmedabad. City looks very beautiful, very presentable, and we are proud of it. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. After 40 years, some guest is big, big people coming from USA. And this is a proud moment for us. This is our proud. Okay, we are Ahmedabadi, and he is coming to meet us. Very excited. Everybody is so very excited. Bahut sara banners lage huye hai, sara roads, bahut sara kuch excited lag raha hai. Sabhi bahut zyada excited hai. Mujhe to bahut proud ho raha hai ki main main Ahmedabad se belong karti hu aur Ahmedabad mein aa rahe hai Trump aur hamara Ahmedabad mein itna bada stadium bana hai to main to bahut hi excited hu. Hum log bahut khush hai jo bahar se aa rahe hai Trump isliye aur India ki bahut tarakki ho gayi. 
So everyone's taking uh, the American president's visit to Ahmedabad in a festive fervor, and Ahmedabad is all set to welcome President Trump here, and all the preparations are being done to welcome the U.S. president and its first lady. With camera person Sumit Nodial, Meghna Dev, DD News, Ahmedabad. DD News reports from Ground Zero and gets you a sneak peek into the Mutera Stadium. After the Grand Indian Cultural Road Show, U.S. President Donald Trump and Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be here at the Motera Stadium. This stadium is the world's largest cricket stadium, which has a seating capacity of over 1 lakh people. And on that day, on 24th of February, this stadium will be more than full of its capacity. So let me show you all the preparations that are taking place at the Motera Stadium to host the grand event of Namaste Trump. So here we can see that the stage is being set up all the uh, the stage is getting equipped to host the grand event to bring both the world leaders together also there's a video wall that is being put up that is being set up which will be which will be displaying all the events uh, which will be tracking all the things that would be going on the stage and also we can see that the speakers have been put up on the ground and the ground is getting all decked up with the stadium so that and also the lights are being put up all the uh, the, the lights for the event are being put up so that the, the event that takes place is as grand as the Houston event of how the Modi was. So it is. it would be a multiple times a greater reciprocation of the Howdy Modi event here at the Motera Stadium. And Namaste Trump is not only going to be just a, just an event which will have spectators, but will also have the enthrallment, excitement, and cultural extravaganza all combined into one. With camera person Sumit Nodial, this is Megha Dev from Motera Stadium and the bar for Global Scan, DD India. It's now understand in detail the kind of impact that uh, the visit of U.S. President Donald Trump to India is going to have on the India-U.S. partnership. So this uh, is going to be extremely crucial because President Trump will be the seventh U.S. President to visit India after Eisenhower, Nixon, Carter, Bill Clinton, George Bush, and then Barack Obama twice, and now Bill Clinton. And of course, uh, now Donald Trump. Trump fulfills promised to visit India in his first term. This was the kind of promise that Donald Trump had made to Prime Minister Narendra Modi when they first met sometime in June 2017 at the White House. First a standalone visit by a U.S. President to India. This is a first. Never before has a U.S. President paid a standalone visit to India. Fifth Trump-Modi meeting in eight months, an eighth meeting overall. So they've met several times. It shows the kind of buoyancy that is there at the topmost level. If we took from the political sense between India and the United States. September 2018, a 2 plus 2 dialogue between defense and foreign ministers started and the last edition of that dialogue took place in December 2019. Besides that, now let's take a look at Namaste Trump, which is going to be the marquee landmark event. Uh, PM Modi and President Trump's uh, joint address at Motera Cricket Stadium. This is uh, something that is going to have the world watching. Besides that, uh, Event to be similar to Howdy Modi event in Houston that took place in September last year. And remember the kind of eyeballs that that got and similar eyeballs are expected this time around as well. There are other sectors as well and this is about counterterrorism cooperation. March 2019, the last meeting of the Joint Working Group on Counterterrorism in Washington had uh, taken place and this shows the kind of buoyancy that is there insofar as counterterrorism cooperation between India and the US is concerned. Designations dialogue has been initiated and this uh, is all about designating a lot of terrorist entities and terrorists, most of whom are based out of Pakistan. Homeland Security Pact on the Anvil, that's what the Ministry of External Affairs has said, that there are five packs, one of them would be on Homeland Security as well, and that is going to have a bearing on counterterrorism cooperation. India-U.S. bilateral trade now. U.S. is India's largest trading partner in goods and services. That's the kind of traded and uh, investment relationship that India and the United States share. Having said that, uh, let's take a look at the bilateral uh, trade uh, quantum and how it's gone up by around 10% every year over the last two years. And so bilateral trade is growing with time. Expected to cross $150 billion for the first time this year. So that's the kind of target that both sides have set in a sense of bilateral trade, $150 billion this year. Having said that, U.S. trade deficit has declined from $21 billion to $16 billion. So there is already a decline in a trade deficit. Uh, remember, India enjoys a trade surplus, but that is not as significant as, say, countries like the U.S. have with China. 
U.S. Uh, India is the sixth largest source of crude oil imports and uh, crude uh, oil imports or petroleum imports are uh, some of those items that are helping reduce that trade deficit. Trade facilitation pact is also on the anvil. So bes besides uh, Homeland Security, trade facilitation is a pact that could well be signed between India and the United States. The novel coronavirus epidemic is continuing to take its toll, but new confirmed cases of the virus have recorded a decline in China. Other countries continue to battle the spread of the virus too. South Korea confirmed its first death from coronavirus, even as Japan is facing criticism of its handling of the situation ahead of the Tokyo Olympics. In Pakistan, worried parents whose children are in Wuhan are pressing a defiant Imran Khan government to evacuate them. In a major relief, mainland China reported on Thursday the lowest number of confirmed cases of the new coronavirus since last January. Partly because of change in diagnostic criteria for patients in Hubei province, the epicenter of the outbreak. China had 394 new confirmed cases on the 19th of February, said the National Health Commission, sharply down from 1,749 cases a day earlier and the lowest since the 23rd of January. That brings the total accumulated number of confirmed cases in mainland China to 74,576. But fears grow in Seoul as South Korea has confirmed its first death from coronavirus. The country has recorded 22 new cases, bringing the total to 104. The exact cause of death is being investigated. In India, last batch of six people among the 406 quarantined at an ITBP facility in Delhi were discharged after being evacuated earlier this month from coronavirus hit Wuhan. All released persons have been advised to remain self-isolated for the next 14 days at their respective places. People who were quarantined at the Manesar Army camp on their return from China were also discharged after they tested negative of the novel coronavirus. Meanwhile, the Japanese government has defended its efforts to tackle the novel coronavirus' rapid spread and the quarantine operation that has sparked criticism of authorities just months before Tokyo is due to host the Summer Olympics. Japan has spread over half the known cases outside China due to the ship infections and the rapid spread of the virus. Meanwhile, more than 150 Australians arrived home to begin two weeks of quarantine after finally disembarking from a cruise ship docked in Japan where more than 600 people have contracted the newly identified coronavirus. The Diamond Princess, owned by Carnival Corporation, has been quarantined at Yokohama near Tokyo since the 3rd of February, initially with 3,700 people on board, including 220 Australian holiday makers. In Pakistan, angry parents of students stuck in the lockdown province at the centre of China's coronavirus outbreak confronted government ministers at a meeting on the 19th of February, demanding their children be evacuated. حکومت کس بات سے ڈری ہے حکومت کیا عمران خان اس بات کا ڈسیزن نہیں لے سکتا کہ پی آئی اے کی فلائٹ اٹھائے اپنے بچوں کو ایویکٹیٹ کرے اور ان کو وہاں پہ لائے کورنٹین پیریٹ پورا کرے وہاں پہ کر لے یا یہاں پہ کر لے اس کا جتنا ایکسپینس ہے پیرنٹس پی کرنے کے لیے اتیار ہیں آپ نے خود دیکھا اپنی آنکھوں سے لوگوں کا کیا حال ہے پیرنٹس کا کیا حال ہے لوگوں کو غشیں پڑ رہی ہیں جو وہ اپنے بچوں کو دیکھتے ہیں حالت تندرست بچے ایسے لگتے ہیں جیسے یہ بیمار ہم لوگ احتجاج کریں گے جب تک ہمارے بچے واپس نہیں آئیں گے ہمارا اور کوئی مطالبہ نہیں ہمیں صرف اور صرف ہمارے بچے چاہیے جو کہ وہاں پہ زندگی اور موت کی کشم کشم ہیں وہ بچے ہیں وہ ابھی ڈپریشن کا شکار ہو رہے ہیں پاکستان ہے سو فار روٹ آٹ برنگی ہوم دو موردن ون تھاؤزن سٹوڈنٹس ہیو بے پروونس اور اس کیپٹل ووہان ویر تری کورٹرز آف دو موردن ٹو تھاؤزن دیتس The new coronavirus emerged in the city of Wuhan, the capital of the central province of Hubei in December, having apparently been passed to people from wildlife sold illegally in a market. Bureau Report, Global Scan Desk, DD India. The FATF has decided to keep Pakistan on its grey list for its failure to curb terror financing. If not removed off the list, Pakistan may move to a blacklist of countries that face severe economic sanctions such as Iran. Pakistan submitted a 650-page review report to the FATF on the 8th of January. The report was submitted in response to 150 questions raised by the FATF regarding new Pakistani policies on money laundering. The report outlined the steps taken by Pakistan between October 2019 to January 2020 to implement the group's recommendations. Let's now move on to news from the Americas. Billionaire former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg was the common target of all other Democratic presidential aspirants when the ninth presidential debate took place on Wednesday. Bloomberg countered, explaining why he deserves to be the Democratic presidential nominee. 
The exchange of barbs comes just days ahead of Super Tuesday on the 3rd of March when almost one third of all the delegates for the National Democratic Convention will be up for grabs. As the 2020 US presidential elections heat up, the top six candidates competing for the Democratic nomination to take on US President Donald Trump in November participated in the ninth presidential debate on Wednesday. One person on the stage quickly became the focus of criticism and he was none other than Michael Bloomberg, the billionaire former New York mayor. Democrats are not going to win if we have a nominee who has a history of hiding his tax returns, of harassing women, and of supporting racist policies like redlining and stop and frisk. Look, I'll support whoever the Democratic nominee is, but understand this. Democrats take a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. In order to beat Donald Trump, we're going to need the largest voter turnout in the history of the United States. Uh, Mr. Bloomberg had policies in New York City of stop and frisk, which went after African-American and Latino people in an outrageous way. That is not a way you're going to grow voter turnout. I've been told many times to wait my turn and to step aside, and I'm not going to do that now, and I'm not going to do that because a campaign memo uh, from Mayor Bloomberg said this morning uh, that the only way uh, that we get a nominee is if we step aside for him. I think we need something different than Donald Trump. I don't think you look at Donald Trump and say we need someone richer in the White House. We could wake up two weeks from today, the day after Super Tuesday, and the only candidates left standing will be Bernie Sanders and Mike Bloomberg, the two most polarizing figures on this stage. And most Americans don't see where they fit if they've got to choose between a socialist who thinks that capitalism is the root of all evil and a billionaire who thinks that money ought to be the, the root of all power. Let's put forward somebody who actually lives and works in a middle-class neighborhood in an industrial Midwestern city. Let's put forward somebody who's actually a Democrat. After facing a barrage of attacks at his first Democratic presidential debate, Michael Bloomberg replied, I can't speak for all billionaires. All I know is I've been very lucky, made a lot of money, and I'm giving it all away to make this country better. And a good chunk of it goes to the Democratic Party as well. And I'm a philanthropist who didn't inherit his money, but made his money. And I'm spending that money to get rid of Donald Trump, the worst president we have ever had. And if I can get that done, it will be a great contribution to America and to my kids. Even U.S. President Donald Trump told an event in Bakersfield, California, that he doesn't think he'll be running against Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg in November's general elections. I don't know. I don't think he's going to be the candidate anyway, to be honest. We'll, just, uh, we'll have to start working on Crazy Bernie pretty soon. But it was set up a long time before that. We just found this out about two days ago. Michael Bloomberg, the billionaire former New York mayor, made his first debate appearance in the race and faced attacks from all his rivals on the stage in Las Vegas. With Bureau Inputs, Global Scan Desk, DT India. Moving now to news from Europe. The UK government on Tuesday said that Britain will prioritize access for high-skilled workers from around the world in its post-Brexit points-based immigration system. The new system will assign points for specific skills, qualifications, salaries or professions and only give visas to those who have enough points. It will come into force from the 1st of January 2021 and will treat EU and non-EU citizens the same. Interior Minister Preeti Patel described the move as a radical shake-up that would eliminate routes for low-skilled labour to move to the UK. This is a radical shake-up completely. This is the first time in nearly 40 years where the British government will be in control and will determine its own immigration policy 
and will also be able to determine the type of system that it will be in control of. Um, we are bringing an end to free movement of labour, which of course is linked to our membership of the European Union. And as you've already said, we are no longer going to have a route for low-skilled workers to come to the UK. This will now be a single global system that does not discriminate as to whether or not you come from the EU or from outside of the EU. This will be a single global system based upon the talents and the skills, a link to the points-based system that you've already highlighted, that you can bring to the United Kingdom. But importantly, this is a new system that will be in the control of the British government. On the other hand, French European Affairs Minister Emily D. Montcalm said that France would not sign a bad post-Brexit deal with the UK on the 31st of December just for the sake of agreeing one to meet a deadline. Moving on to Africa now. Nigeria's annual inflation rose to its highest level in nearly two years in January after land borders were closed to trade in a bid to tackle smuggling. Nigeria's annual inflation was hit to its highest level in nearly two years. The data released on the 18th of February showed after Africa's biggest economy stopped all trade in goods via its land borders. The government halted all trade in goods via its land borders indefinitely to fight the smuggling of rice and other goods. But economists say that the choking off of supply has driven inflation and it is shoppers who are feeling the pinch. The central bank, which has been targeting single-digit inflation, said it expects to keep monetary policy tight in 2020 to combat the rise in prices and support the currency amid slow growth. And now a quick roundup of all major developments around the world in Speed News. The much controversial pensions reform bill reached the French parliament as debate on the bill started off on Monday. The bill, which was initially put forth in the parliament in January, will be debated for 15 days before going for a vote on the 3rd of March. The bill calls for the consolidation of 42 separate pension schemes into one point-based plan, something that protesters claim will force workers to labour longer for a lower payout in the end. Meanwhile, labour unions marched in Paris with protesters claiming that the reform would hurt French job market. Residents of Western England and the Welsh borders battled widespread flooding after Storm Denise struck Britain over the weekend. Storm Denise also wreaked havoc in Ireland and left thousands of homes and businesses without power. Heavy rain and strong winds hit the areas barely a week after Storm Kiara caused major disruptions in the region. After emergency services reported major incidents, the Environment Agency said it had issued a record number of flood warnings. Swarms of locusts ravaging crops and grazing land across East Africa have reached South Sudan, a country already reeling from widespread hunger and years of civil war. The invasion is worsening food shortages in a region where up to 25 million people are suffering from three consecutive years of droughts and floods. The countries that are battling the worst locust outbreak in decades include Kenya, Somalia, Eritrea, Tanzania and Uganda, among others. At least 30 civilians were killed in strikes in Yemen, according to the United Nations. This comes following a Saudi-led operation in response to one of its fighter jets crashing with Iran-backed Houthi rebels, claiming to have shot it down. The tornado aircraft came down in northern Al Jaf province during an operation to support government forces. In Canada, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called for a peaceful solution to end rail blockades by indigenous rights groups protesting the construction of a natural gas pipeline. Indigenous communities across Canada have blocked key rail lines for nearly two weeks to oppose the construction of the coastal gas link pipeline in British Columbia, which has forced Canada's biggest railroad, the Canadian National Railway Corporation, to shut operations in the eastern Canada. In Haiti, angry protesters in Port-au-Prince set carnival stands on fire as anti-government protests spilled over in the rest of Caribbean nation. The local media reported that the wooden stands in the Champ de Mars were set alight by citizens critical of the government of President Jovenel Moise. The protesters were angry at the government's budget for the 2020 carnival celebrations, arguing that the money could have been spent better in the impoverished nation. Global Scan Desk, DD India. And now let's see the world from the prism of history in our history scan. On 
On 16th February 1923 in Egypt, English archaeologist Howard Carter entered the sealed burial chamber of the ancient Egyptian ruler King Tutankhamen sealed there for more than 3000 years. The tomb was first discovered by Carter in November 1922 but was opened in February. Pluto, once believed to be the ninth planet, was discovered on 18th February in 1930 at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff in Arizona by astronomer Clyde W. Tombaugh. The existence of an unknown ninth planet was first proposed by Purvis Lowell, who theorized that wobbles in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune were caused by the gravitational pull of an unknown planetary body. Pluto lost its planet status in 2006 and is no more a planet. It was on 19th February in 1473 astronomer Nicholas Copernicus was born in Poland's Torun. Considered the founder of modern astronomy, he put forth the theory that the sun is at rest in the center of the universe and that the earth spinning on its axis once daily revolves annually around the sun. He established the heliocentric system also known as sun-centered system. 21st February 1948 was the day when the National Association for Stock Car Racing was officially founded. The driving force behind the establishment was William Bill France, senior a mechanic and auto repair shop owner from Washington DC. NASCAR racing went on to become one of America's most popular spectator sports as well as a multi-billion dollar industry. Global Scan Desk DD India. And it's time for showbiz now where we bring you all the buzz from the world of art and entertainment. The 70th edition of Germany's biggest film festival, the Berlinale, has kicked off already and is set to take a back to the roots approach. The 10 days extravaganza will see a total of 342 films screening in nine different categories. 18 films will be competing for the prestigious Golden and Silver Bears with hometown favorite Berlin Alexanderplatz and Iranian drama There is No Evil. Amid this, India's pavilion is much talked about. India's external affairs minister Dr S Jayashankar inaugurated the India Pavilion at the festival. The minister also unveiled the poster for the 51st edition of India International Film Festival to be celebrated in Goa this year along with its booklet. If uh, filmmakers from across the world especially from Germany could come to India uh, for their films uh, we have uh, established I believe a single window uh, for processing film shooting. Uh, and uh, with one film visa music dance and drama this year's brit awards had it all britain's biggest music awards turned 40 this year with scottish singer lewis capaldi and rapper dave emerging as big winners at london's the o2 arena capaldi received the award for the best new artist and best song of the year for someone you loved while dave won the coveted album of the year award for his work psychodrama capaldi who scooped two awards sang his ballet someone you loved as many watched in awe the ceremony got a glitzy start with american teen pop sensation billy eilish singing the new theme song to the forthcoming james bond film no time to die she received her very first brit award this year and was named best international female artist of the year while tyler the creator took home the award for the best international male The best um, group I, award I was won by Falls and recently, Celeste won the award for the best rising star. And I saw you guys all smiling. Mabel! Mabel took home the award in the best female artist category thanking her mother, the singer Nene Cherry, who also won a Brit award 30 years ago, while grime artist Stormzy was named the best male artist. It was a sight to behold. as singers and dancers from across the world performed a number of hits which left the audience fully amazed global scan desk dd india and here's another sight to behold that is our image of the week a blast of colorful confetti fell over hordes of smiling people as 136th edition of the king's carnival kicked off in french rivera town of nice with the uh, fashion as its uh, primary theme the annual carnival which started off with the theme of the king of fashion soft floats made up of giant effigies taking center stage at the parade we leave you here as you catch the glimpses of the parade we'll see you next week goodbye for now